One of the toughest parts about managing a patient with glaucoma is keeping the eye pressure under control with multiple medications while also maintaining patient compliance. This usually leads to the big question, how can we best optimize IOP reduction? Let's talk about it. Hey guys, it's Dr. Andreas here. If you're new to this channel, my goal is to help optometry students, residents, and new doctors with optometry related questions. If you like the video, please consider hitting the like button below and subscribing to the channel. And now, on to the video. This video was inspired by a question that I had at the beginning of my residency where I saw multiple glaucoma patients every single day. Some patients were simple, on the tenor post and well controlled, and, but many others were on like four medications and had trouble with compliance. And on top of that, are often hesitant to even get an SLT done. So I asked myself and my preceptors, how can I get the best bang for my buck in regards to IOP decrease with minimal drops and good compliance? Here's what I learned. And by the way, I did shoot the script over to my Nova professor and legend in glaucoma management, Dr. Joseph Salka, and he gave it a thumbs up. So let's do this. Number one, almost always start with a prostaglandin QHSOU. This is of course a no-brainer. It's the best drug on the market. You only use it once a night. And Latanoprost in particular is super cheap, only $12 on GoodRx. Most of the time, this will give you a great response, but a few things to think about if the next IOP reading is still high. You need at least two bad IOP readings for the drop to not work. That means when you prescribe a tenor post and you see them back in three weeks and the IOP is not lower, have them back one more time to confirm this ineffectiveness. You never change treatment on one reading. Also, as for compliance, a very common complaint is, Doc, I sometimes I forget to take it at night because I'm too tired and I fell asleep. Or another one is, Doc, sometimes I wake up in the morning and I'm like, oh shoot, I forgot to take it last night. My response to either of these complaints, and a very common tip I give even if they deny not compliance, is this. If you ever find yourself waking up and thinking you forgot to take an eye drop that night, take the eye drop right then, then take it again that same night. So if you forgot Sunday night, you take it Monday morning, then Monday night, then continue nightly. Even though the drop is ideal for bedtime use, I would rather have you take it in the morning than not at all. I found that after saying that, the next IOP reading is usually lower because even if the patient forgets to take uh, the drop a few nights, they're still taking it around every 24 hours, which is what you want. Now, if the patient is compliant and the IOP drop is still not there after at least two readings, you can go ahead and switch. If the patient is on generic latanoprost, maybe switch for a brand latanoprost or switch to another prostaglandin like Lumigan or Zyobtan. A lot of times that can work. Then, if a different prostaglandin doesn't work, then time to ditch prostaglandins altogether for another drug, preferably either a beta blocker or a CAI. But remember, prostaglandin non-responders are truly rare. Most of the time, this non-response is simply because they're not taking the drug. And you may pick up on this if you see lack of complaints, lack of hyperemia, and a poor IOP response. This is not a drug issue, this is a compliance issue. When is a prostaglandin not a good idea? Prostaglandins by nature are part of the inflammation pathway we learned in our, in our pathology course. So it would make sense that in patients with uveitis or with cystoid macular edema, latanoprost may only make things worse. It also makes sense why prostaglandins cause hyperemia, inflammation of the conge, which is a side effect of the drug you always want to tell your patients, in addition to the added darkening of the eyes or orbit. Lastly, for some reason, prostaglandins just don't work on kids. I don't know why, but they just don't. Okay, so we went over prostaglandins. If the drop doesn't work, switch to something else. If the drop does work, but not by enough, or you see more progression on OCT and visual field, even at your target pressure, then time to add another drop. In an ideal world, the next step would be to replace latanoprost for Visulta, which is a prostaglandin analog that has an additional mechanism of action. It has an ability to release nitric oxide. Now, Visulta is awesome, but it's $207 on GoToRx and difficult to get covered by medical insurance, so not currently realistic for most patients. Now, a combination drug you could try replacing latanoprost with is Roclatan, which is a prostaglandin and a rogue kinase inhibitor combined. In theory, Roclatan is supposed to be amazing because it's the only drug that opens up corneal scleral and uveal scleral outflow. In practice, I'm not sure how effective it is, but the one time I use it, and from what my residency preceptors have told me, it caused hyperemia that's way worse than latanoprost. 
By the way, if you've personally used Visolta or Roclitan or Repressa or heard of a doctor's experience with it, please comment your thoughts on those drugs below. So anyways, if prostaglandin needs a boost, here's our next step. Number two, either Timbalol 0.5% QAM or Dozolamide Q12 hour. Why do I say either? because they each have their pros and cons. With Timolol, you can Rx once every morning, which is easy for the patient to remember, given as it complements Latanoprost's nightly use. I can think of countless number of times as a resident at the VA when my patient would tell me, I just use a yellow drop in the morning and the blue-green looking drop at night. Yellow cap as in sunny morning and teal as in dim night. Also, it helps that Timolol is $7 in GoodRx. However, always, always, always ask for any lung issues like COPD or asthma, as Timolol is contraindicated in those conditions, as well as any heart problems, specifically a low pulse and congestive heart failure. The alternative to Timolol, whether Timolol is contraindicated or it just doesn't work, would be dorzolamide. It is twice a day, so that would only add a slight burden to the patient, but carbonic and hydrogen inhibitors are known to have a great synergistic effects with prostaglandins, which means more bang for your buck in terms of IOP decrease. Cons, sulfa allergies. Also, you have to warn the patient of any possible side effects like numbness, tingling of the arms, metallic taste. But of course, an eye drop is definitely not as bad in terms of side effects versus its oral counterpart. And that's why I haven't really encountered many complaints um, on drizolamide. One thing to also note, if you're on drizolamide and latanoprost, that means you're taking one drop in the morning and two drops at night. You would think that it'd be easier to take the second drop of drizolamide in the middle of the day, uh, so drizolamide, drizolamide, latanoprost, but remember, drizolamide is not twice a day, it's every 12 hours. That's a big difference. Remember, you're not just trying to acutely lower IOP, but rather keep it low for the longest period of time to follow that diurnal curve, which means you have to take drizolamide at night without tenopros, which isn't a problem, but make sure you always tell your patient that if they're set to use multiple drops at the same time, to space out the drops at least five minutes. Don't take drop one, then take drop two immediately after because some of drop one will get washed out. Take them at least five minutes apart. Try not to tell them at least 10 to 15 minutes apart because then they'll say, yeah, I took the first drop and was going to wait 15 minutes, but then I fell asleep. Trust me, I've heard that plenty of times. Okay, so let's say out of the two secondary meds that you pick Timolol. If Timolol doesn't work, you switch to Dorzolamide, if not contraindicated. If Timolol does work, but not enough, the next step is not to add Dorzolamide, but rather to replace Timolol with the combination drug Cosoft. Great drug, twice a day dosage, and with the patient also being on post, you should have a great IOP lowering effect. If instead, if you originally picked dorzolamide as a second drug, switch to latanoprost if it didn't work, or switch dorzolamide to Cosoft if it worked but not enough. Okay, so ideally IOP should be controlled at this point, but if it's not, and you're convinced that the patient is compliant, then our Hail Mary and our third bullet point is Bermonidine TID. The reason why I place this drug last is because it's weaker than the other drugs, it needs to be used more often than the other drugs, risking compliance, and the side effects totally suck. Redness, stinging, coronal toxicity, follicles. So yeah, bromondine is toxic to the eye and probably half of my glaucoma patients that are on it at some point either can't tolerate it, complain about the red eye, or forget to put that eye drop the most. So I tend to avoid using it unless I have to. A few things about bromonidine. Fun fact, when bromonidine is cut in concentration, you get lumify, which ironically gets rid of your red eye, but does nothing to your IOP. Bromonidine can sometimes be clutch if your patient can't use Timolol. This means they're on latanoprost, dorzolamide, and when you want to add bromonidine, you just switch dorzolamide for the combo drop Simbrinza. Simbrinza is nice because its best usage is three times a day, but you can still use it twice a day. One less drop a day, less chance of bromonidine side effects. Now, if Simbrizza twice a day doesn't cut it, doesn't decrease it by enough, then yeah, you can switch the TID. Alternatively, if your patient cannot use dorzolamide but can use Timolol, then you can switch Timolol for Combigan. Combigan is great, but is expensive though, and I know at least from my experience at the VA hospital, it wasn't even on the list of drugs that VA doctors were allowed to prescribe without going through a million hoops to, to explain the reasoning. For a patient that reacted bromonidine, consider using Alphagan P as it has a better preservative, purite, and should help with side effects. Also, I've had patients show up with prior records where the previous doctor had them on bromonidine QID. Uh-uh, try to switch that because four times a day is overkill. The fourth drop really doesn't do much. You risk giving the patient a red eye, which often these patients already present with one, 
and compliance is gonna be very difficult. Like, I think I would personally struggle using a drop twice a day. I can't imagine having to use bromonidine four times a day plus other drops. Yeah, right. In conclusion, to recap the flow of adding glaucoma drops, we got prostaglandins. Then to add that, ideally we would do a prostaglandin combo or a Visolta, but difficult for the patient to afford, so instead we will likely add timolol or dorzolamide. If patient cannot do timolol, then do dorzolamide and consider switching to some Brinza if further help is needed. If patient cannot do dorzolamide, then do timolol and consider switching to Combigan if needed. If patient can tolerate both timolol and drosolamide, consider just picking one of the two, then switching to Cosopt if needed. Then as a Hail Mary, add bromonidine if necessary. There are other eye drops that I haven't covered, which are pilocarpine, effective but QID, and side effects including myopic shift, brow aches, retinal detachments, among other things. And there are oral drugs like Diamoctors have side effects and we're not even allowed to prescribe as ODs unless it's for 48 hours as part of an acute angle closure. If you find that medical glaucoma therapy fails or you find that the patient is repeatedly not compliant on only one or two meds, then it's time to can talk about having an SLT. Sometimes just threatening to send them for an SLT if the next IOP reading is high may prompt them to be more compliant. But for real, you need to send them out for an SLT and that can reduce the IOP for a while. Then if IOP creeps back up and the patient is already in maximal therapy and you've tried everything, then you may have to resort to a referral for glaucoma surgery and then it's out of our hands. That's all for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any tips regarding glaucoma management, whether it's what drops to use on next scenario, patient education tips to increase compliance, or anything else that might help a fellow OD, please comment below. And of course, feel free to comment uh, any future video topics you want me to do. And don't forget to click that little like button. See you guys later.